What's up beautiful people? It's Mary Ann Mwangi back at it again. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I'm excited to be seeing you guys today. Honestly, um, I'm just going to be telling you guys the truth. I have an exam in like four hours, but I'm too nervous and I thought where should I channel this energy that I'm feeling today? And I thought, you know what? It is you. This energy is for you. So if you're watching this video in the morning, good morning. If you're watching it in the evening, how are you? I wish you a good rest after you watch this terrifying video. So what's the topic for today? Today we are going to be talking about how to survive your au pair year. This video is for my people who are already au pairs and are facing the deepest challenges of their lives because au pair is not easy. It's not. Mark my words, it's not easy. Or for those of them who are still applying and still in the process of going um, <clears throat> to get your visa and everything and you don't know what to expect, I am here to tell you the truth and especially from my experience, what au pair is, what exactly it looks like, what are the challenges that you face, how do you approach them and this is going to be the video for anybody who's interested about au pair. So I have another notice. I recently posted another video of a Q&A of me responding to questions that people have concerning au pair and the program and everything. And in that video, I mentioned that if you want an A1 book that you should um, write me a comment on the comment section and I was going to reply. So I've replied to most of you. I know most people who watch probably subscribe, but uh, if you did not subscribe, so if you don't get this video, I'm really sorry. But if you get it and you wrote me, please go back and check your comment. I wrote you back there um, an email address where you were supposed to write me so that I can send you the book because I cannot send it on the comment section, clearly, no? Yeah, zoop. <laughs> yeah, and also, like I say, I like to be fair, so if I mentioned it on that video, I'm also going to mention it on this video. So I have a copy of an A1 textbook and a B1 textbook of German, like if you're trying to teach yourself German and you haven't watched any of the videos where I offered this book, I'm continuing to offer it. So mention it to me on the comment section. Really, you don't have to write anything, just write like A1 or B1 or whatever you want. And then I will reply to you with an email address. And once I give you the email address, please make sure you write me because um, if I only give you mine, that means I don't have yours. So I can't send you the book that way. So you have to write me and then I send you the book through um, an email address. I created a, a new one particularly for this purpose so that I get to have some sort of a community now that uh, you guys know where you can reach me if not on my Instagram. Otherwise, my Instagram is at Miriam Mwangi and now it's about three minutes into the video. We have to start. We have to start. So number one, what are the challenges you face as an au pair, especially in Germany? I'm going to be telling you these things mostly from my experience. So if you find things you don't agree with, maybe it's because your experience was different or anything. But some, I try to be as general as possible, but this is... Number one of the things you're going to face is the language. Oh my God, like, ooh. If you've never faced a language barrier in your life, this is going to hit you small, big, and everything mighty. So if you have a chance to learn the German language, or if you're traveling to any other country, Spain, and you need to learn Spanish and anything, make sure you invest in learning the language because the language is a barrier. And this is how I mean it. Sometimes we, on a day-to-day -day basis, especially when it's a good day, you get to learn more but when it's a bad day you learn very little for example when the kids are being stressful and um maybe you're not able to finish your work on time and everything and you have to explain yourself in german or in the foreign language that you're supposed to be speaking that becomes a problem that ruins your day it ruins your experience it ruins everything so if you can be able to invest in your language go as high as you can with your language levels that's what i mean because particularly for me on days when I had good days, I was really okay. The kids used to teach me uh, pronunciation. They kept teaching me um, how to, you know, sentence structure and everything. I kept paying attention to how they pronounce the words, how they choose the words, what they find for life, what they do not. But on the days when it went haywire, baby, it was really hectic. You try to even express yourself. It frustrates you that you cannot even express yourself because you cannot even speak the language. So if you, baby, if you can learn the language, go ahead and put all the time and all the energy you can to invest in learning the language because language barrier is a b -b 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 
be binaja he if you kick you know what that means yeah so that's about the language so the second point is culture shock oh my god culture shock and by culture i mean you are deep into a new culture you're really deep into it because you're no longer just dealing with um for example germans in generally you are living with them so everything you've read about them multiply it by a thousand and then live with them live with people who have a completely different culture from you number one the food i told you when i did the video about culture shock one of the things that scared me the most is i am african i am kenyan particularly and we have three warm meals a day our breakfast is warm our lunch is warm and our supper is warm dinner is also warm so when I came here, these people uh, only eat one warm meal in a day. So they have cold breakfast. By cold, I mean something like uh, maybe bread with like, I don't know, orange saft, <laughs> orange juice or apple juice. And during lunch, they have a warm meal. Maybe they can have something like noodles and, um, you know, a sauce or something, just something like baked, you know, anything. And for dinner they have bread like they, it's even called urban boat literally bread of the evening evening bread so once you have a completely different culture i know for example people come from mexico spain and everywhere they have a huge challenge living here also people coming from thailand because they have warm meals all the time but once you live into a family that they have lesser warm meals then it becomes a huge challenge because for me particularly i was always cold like because I even feel like I'm hungry, it makes me feel like I'm extremely cold. So if you're going to have differences in how you eat, you have to be able to talk about it. And um, for example, mention that for you, you like to have your three warms, uh, three meals warm. Especially, you know, you're an au pair, so you're supposed to be trying to adapt to a new culture. But if it's not working out, then it's just not. So they have to find a way to adjust uh, to your liking. And you also have to somehow adjust to their liking. So maybe if it's making lunch then you make lunch with an extra meal for you for dinner so that you have um, something else to eat later on if you're used to having um two warm meals or three or however so food is going to be a huge problem number two i have met people from different countries who have told me kids in germany are raised differently like kids in the states are not raised the way kids in germany are raised kids in everywhere especially in africa we can't even compare like we raise our children completely differently so when you come here one of the problems you're going to have as an au pair is knowing how to deal with children you might be talented as a person that you can just really work well with kids and it's it doesn't give you so much of a challenge to work with children but the moment you work with kids who are treated as adults from the moment they are able to reason on their own it becomes very difficult especially for the fact that um most times i'm not saying all the time but most times the adult is right like if the adult says it's cold they actually mean it's cold but the kids sometimes cannot be able to process that it's cold and you have to have the language to talk to them in a way that they will understand and in a way that you can be able to convince them that it's actually cold that's just an example but particularly i mean german kids they are not the type of kids you're going to tell sit down and do this and do this no that does not work out if you say sit down they ask why if you can't answer why that's the end of that conversation they're not going to be doing what you ask them to do and maybe that's your job maybe your job is to make them sit down for me particularly i had a huge problem with the kids watching tv why because the mom used to allow them to watch tv but she gives me the rules that the kids should not watch tv so when i'm seated here trying to tell the kids not to watch tv they tell me their mom allows them to watch tv who am i to not um, allow them to watch tv and these things particularly they frustrate you on a different level well for me they did so that's why i'm sharing this with you just in case you're experiencing this just know it has nothing it's not personal they have nothing against you it's just they just don't know how to reason out with things that are not um uh, reasonable like if you if you don't approach them with some sort of logic in some sort of you try to uh, make them understand the relationship between what you're saying and the result and everything and how it affects them then just know it's not going to work out and it has nothing to do with you it has absolutely nothing to do with you it has everything to do with the fact that that's just how they're raised and they're taught logic they're taught to express themselves um 
they're taught to not be controlled so it has nothing to do with you it has everything to do with just how they're raised and you just have to come deep deep into the culture and understand and also ask the mom how she wants you to talk to her kids or the dad if you were working with the dads also and yeah so particularly kids are raised differently and i want you to know it has nothing to do with you that's just their culture that's just german culture in general so the other challenge you face as an au pair working in germany or just generally as an au pair is unclear working hours of course in your contract for example in germany it says you work i think 30 hours a week i think a maximum of five each day or i don't know how that contract states and everything but the thing is you live where you work so everything you do mostly it should be your job but you you can only work for five hours you're only paid for five hours but there are times where your five hours have been exceeded but you still live there so anything that is supposed to be done or anything that you find logical to do you're still going to do it but you're not getting paid for it and um sometimes the problem is sometimes these five hours are not really you don't get these five hours like at once like in the morning like the way normal people just wake up and they have you know i'll go to work and work for five hours and then go back home unfortunately this is not the case as an au pair because you're there to create convenience for this family first of all so the time that they need you is when your working hours count so in the morning if they don't need you you're basically not working but maybe if you need to take breakfast with them if you want to take breakfast with them you still wake up and make the the uh, you still wake up and set the table and the reason why this is a problem is because on other days when you're working you actually get paid to do that you know so it's quite odd and you get really unclear working hours and um for example when other people are working five hours for example you work one hour you rest i don't know four hours and then you go again three hours and then it's really just unclear working hours so the best thing to do with this scenario especially if you're working with people who are not straight and direct ask for a schedule sit down with the host mom or the host dad and write down a schedule write down what they expect of you and also write down what you expect of them write down uh how your day starts how it ends what counts for you as working hours what does not what time am i free what time um can i just go out vice to because sometimes when you have like four hours in between and then you have one hour working before the four hours and also one other hour before after the four hours you find that within these four hours if you wanted to like go somewhere you can't because you have to come back you know so ask them to make a schedule that's also suitable for you and also more suitable for them and working hours are really a problem because sometimes you drop you don't even get to these 30 hours because i mean if you're also working with a family where two parents are there and they come home every day that's really convenient and they spend a lot of time with their children that's really german according to me that's really german and i like that about them but um if you're an au pair and you're having trouble talking about your working hours just know that's your right just as it is their right for them to demand things of you because they've employed you yeah just also ask for schedules and uh, make things clear and straight you're not trying to overdo you're not also trying to underdo we're just trying to create convenience for both of us yeah so the other challenge you have as an au pair is drawing the line where you're family and where you're not so particularly when you're applying for au pair most families because for me i went through a lot of applications and i went through scrutinizing most multiple families because honestly i was a hot kick because i had a b2 level of german i could speak somehow well not really but i could at least understand most of german i had b1 and i was uh, i had prior experience with kids and everything so i was most i was a target to most families so my profile attracted very many families but i went on scrutinizing most of them and most of them actually uh, wanted someone who completely integrates into their family and someone who becomes family so the problem is it's okay you can be integrated to the family but there are times where you're not family and as an au pair you need to know when am i family and when am i not because if you put your heart out there so much that you think uh, we are extremely family and everything one day the shock oh the shock the shock that will slap you mm -mm. the shock that will remind you baby this is not your house mm?
<laughs> you don't want to experience that shock and also you don't also want to completely just sit in your room the whole time so what you want to do is draw the line where you're familiar and where you're not for example if it comes to expenses these people don't owe you anything seriously they don't owe you anything in form of expenses apart from the money they're paying you do not victor do not expect anything else aside from what they're paying you and also once they're having like family events know where to draw the line am i part of this am i not when they're having very intimate like very very deep conversations about their family you you, you don't count mm, you don't I don't know how to tell you this but just know where to draw the line i'm not saying you don't inter get integrated to your family get integrated to them but also as much as you don't let them experience so much about your family is as much as they probably also don't want you to experience so much about their family so just know where to draw the line be friendly and everything and enjoy your stay oh my god be as open as you can be but don't be dumb enough to not know that you're not their family you're not i'm not going to lie to you you're not a member of their family you're not their big sister you're not nothing close to that you're not don't bring yourself into disappointment you're not and don't make yourself get angry and if you guys want me to talk about this topic deeply as you can tell i'm very passionate about this point because for me <clears throat> the shock i got hey Be careful on also drawing the line where your family and where you not. So the other point about uh, the challenges they face as an au pair is being broke. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that as an au pair you make millions of dollars. No, you do not. Especially in Germany, you make now it's even been increased. You make about two hundred and eighty euro a week uh, a month. Is that a lot of money no it's not is that enough money yes it is but is it a lot no it's not so once you're going to be paying for things like courses which are uh, somehow expensive like if you find a course mostly the cheapest you're going to get it is about 150 and at this 150 you really got into the cheapest school with i don't know the weirdest working hours or class hours and everything so if you're going to be looking for a convenient course it's going to cost for example above 300 about 300 particularly means that um that's way above the money you, you you're making as a as an au pair and the moment you're going to have to be paying for things that are more expensive than what you're making you have to strain a lot of months saving especially if you left your country without any money which is usually mostly the case but at this point you're going to be broke a lot so if you if there's an advice i can give you as an au pair be very careful with what you buy remember as an au pair the only things you need like you don't need to go to work every day so you don't need clothes to be going to work every day i know some people have drip and style and everything nice but um the things as an au pair you'll have to forego mostly because you're broke and um, i'm not trying to say you're poor but you just cannot afford like a particular lifestyle as an au pair especially if you're paying for example things like courses tickets and um uh, for example you're also t paying to take care of yourself as a woman you know we are expensive there are things we need as women you probably need that nice perfume you need that roll-on that has no aluminum for your armpits now you need that i don't know shaving appar apparatus 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 you need that tool for shaving and everything so you're gonna have to learn how to manage your finances because as an au pair you're really not making as much money as you probably think you are no you are not so you are going to be broke and if you're going to be sending money home particularly for my people who have to send money back home you have to be very careful because even as an au pair i assume after being an au pair you want to do something for yourself in life you probably want to start an house building or you want to go ahead and start the university in this country you are going to need some money to transition from au pair into the next program you're going to join so if you don't have this money it's going to be a problem so towards the last six months of your au pair make sure you're saving every single dime that you can to make your transition as smooth as possible if you watch this when it's already nine months past your pair i'm really sorry no one told you this but you are going to need some money to be able to transition from your au pair into any other program that you want to join for example in germany or for people who for example in netherlands or 
in Austria and they want to move back to Germany, that's the best thing you can be able to do for yourself. Save as much as you can because the moment you move from au pair into anything else, you'll be able to afford everything else that you think you need as an au pair, which particularly you don't because you basically work at home. Okay? Yeah. So the other thing you're going to face deeply, oh my god, it's going to be homesick. It's Oh my homesick is really a bad baby yango. Homesick is really bad. Like you you experience it on very odd hours. Like for me, I got homesick mostly shortly before I slept when I missed having stories with my mom and I can hear the kids upstairs having you know a good time with their mom and everything and for me every time i got from school because when i was still in kenya most of what i was doing is german course and i used to go back home quite late and when i go back home the first thing i do is i chill with my mom we eat and we talk and those were the moments i lived for because particularly they were so important for me to be able to shut down from uh, the day and come back home bring my thoughts to peace so that i can be able to sleep and i missed that a lot because it's not the same on phone even if you're on video call it's not really the same so homesick is going to be a badass honestly today i cannot be able to give you tips on how to survive homesickness i was home <laughs> I went home like I don't know four weeks ago because I I just couldn't anymore I just wanted to see my home I wanted to feel my family I wanted to sp to hear people speak my language and everything so I cannot really be able to give you a tip on how you're going to survive homesick but if you find any make sure you drop it down also on the comment section for the people who are interested in knowing how do I survive being homesick I'm just here to tell you it's going to be there and it's going to be bad so be ready for it uh, if you need to maybe take things from home that will make you feel more homely when you're uh, going on with your au pair, that's going to be important. But for now, I really don't have any tips. I'm just here to tell you homesick is there. Homesick is a bitch. It's going to follow you. Yes, it is. So we are almost getting to the end of this video and oh, the next thing I want really to talk about is au pairs who go to au pair in rural areas. Like for people who go and au pair... Uh, in villages like Germany a village is, is basically as modern as a city in form of infrastructure and everything but in form of people lord people living in the village that I just want to tell you the truth they just act like people who live in the village so if you have a different skin color they will stare at you like you're going to get bored in the village I want to tell you the truth like you're going to get bored it's going to be difficult to make friends you're going to have a very hard time getting to know people and it's it's like being in a rural area it's really hard especially if you're even an outgoing person I particularly met someone she's one of my subscribers she just came to my house a few days ago She's been an au pair for I think about five months and she doesn't have any friends, literally, because she au pairs in uh, some village somewhere, uh, somewhere, I don't want to be mentioning things about people because I told you this is Germany, you could get sued for that, but, um, au pairing in rural areas is hard so if you ask me for my opinion if you're looking for an au pair family focus on going to the city why because it's going to be easier for you to make friends you're going to attend a german course that has more people if anything you know and like don't do it to yourself if you don't have to don't go and au pair in a rural area that's just my thought i mean if you like horses and everything it's also beautiful and shit but that's just not for me I just love people, I just want to be where people are, but if you're okay, for example, you want a family that has horses, then rural areas is going to be the best for you. Just not my cup of tea. Nope. It's not working for me. <laughs> so we're right about the end of this video. This is going to be my last point. <clears throat> my last point today. Kids will not always accept you as an au pair. It's not always going to be, oh, come here, you may no <laughs> kids it takes a lot of time to build trust with children especially if you don't speak their language okay it takes so if kids and if you're not having that bonding relationship with the au pair kids that you're having or the host kids that you're having i'm just here to tell you really 
it does it might have something to do with you but mostly that's just how kids are they build trust over time and it takes a lot of time for them to build trust so if you're here looking at yourself wondering oh my god i don't know how my relationship with my host kids is going to improve just make sure you try to ask your mom their host mom how to engage them into conversations because it's going to be hard it's going to be hard kids are difficult it's difficult to deal with kids and i'm here to tell you the truth like i usually champion a lot for au pair program but i also keep telling you if i have a choice none of my family members will ever do au pair because for me it never turned out to be the 100 percent program that you want to take in uh, to take part in i'm thankful i did but mm -mm. if i if i was asked to do it again honestly no i'm not doing it <laughs> no I'm not doing it at all, at all, at all, at all. So, like I say, kids will not always accept you immediately. So, learn how to be a kid also as yourself and try to uh, incorporate these kids into your life and also try to incorporate yourself into their life so that uh, it makes it only makes your life easier if you don't have stress with your kids. Like, you can have stress with your mom and stress with your housework and everything, but the moment you have stress with your kids, that becomes a very, very difficult job so like i promised we've come to the end of this video today i hope you could get yourself some useful tips if not tips at least you got a little bit enlightened on how to survive your au pair year and some of the challenges that will come onto you i hope they don't but if they do at least you've heard them before and yeah so uh, if you've gotten to the end of this video that means you're a genuine fan of me and um I'm going to be asking you of something. So, for example, if you're in Germany and you're an au pair and you'd like to share your story on my platform, just be sure to write me a comment in the comment section down below. I will write you on my DM. Um, oh, I'll write you on Instagram or I can write you an email or I can give you my contact so we can remain in contact. So maybe you can share your story onto my platform. And if that's what you want to do, I will appreciate that so much because there are so many people who want to hear this from a different mouth, from a different perspective. So if you want um, um, to share your story on my platform, just make sure you do that. I am going to be very, very happy for you. And yeah, be blessed and have yourself a wonderful week. I have examined the next four hours, like I mentioned in the beginning of this um, in the beginning of this video. So I'm just going to, I don't know, get ready sit down and wait for my exam probably read one or two three things but wish me luck also on my exam and i wish to see you guys soon if you also have a suggestion for video i should be shooting you know what to do drop it down for me on the comment section below and bye